Amen. Amen. Let's go. Let's make a decision today that I'm leaving Egypt. Amen. Amen. Egypt represent a place of bondage. It represent a place of sin. It represent a place of familiarity. Something when life get hard and when things get rough and tough. I had it better in Egypt, but that's a lie. You was getting abused by that man. You were getting abused by that woman. You were getting abused by that drug. You were getting abused by self. Self is the biggest enemy. Amen. Self will get you in places that you don't want to be in. Sin will cost you more than you're willing to pay. And you're going to stay longer than you was intending to stay because of sin. Uh, we've heard from so many prophets uh, in the last month or so, and God has given me a word to combine all of their words, but yet and still we need the word for today. Yeah. Amen. And before uh, the Lord does what he wants to while I'm conscious, I just want to recognize my family. Amen. Uh, my wife, and them, they all, y'all stand so they'll know I got family. Amen. Amen. I thank God for all of my family. Amen. Y'all may be seated. Amen. And then my barber and his wife, Pastor Quincy, all the way from Monroe. Y'all may stand. Amen. Amen. I thank God for him coming. Amen. But I certainly thank God for all of you that are my family also. Amen. God is doing a new thing, but it's actually an old thing, but it's new to us. Amen. We see new football players all the time, but the game is old. Amen. And, and those of us that used to play real football, we call it touch football now. Amen. That they're playing. But nevertheless, uh, God has a word for us. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for life, health, and strength. Father God, we thank you for your people, the sheep of your pastor. Lord, I just ask that you empty me of self. And Lord, let your spirit reign, rule, and abide in each one of us. We bind every spirit. We bind the spirit of heaviness that's trying to come in and penetrate. We bind every spirit of darkness. We command it to go now. In the name of Jesus and every hindered spirit, every lying demon, every demon that come to interrupt, we command you to go now. And we loose the spirit of love, joy, and the Holy Ghost, peace and understanding, wisdom and knowledge to walk in this house. And we command every death ear to be open, every stone and heart to be broken, and every foul spirit. And we pray for the mind that it will be open. In Jesus' name, amen. The mind, the, the old, and I'm going to say it again, the old uh, theme for uh, historical black college used to be, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. The mind is a terrible thing to lose. And right now, the church, if we're not careful, we're about to lose our mind. And so Paul is instructing. Paul is instructing the believers, his children, the Philippians. The Philippians is the church that he gave birth to. And he has been in prison for a couple of years. And uh, he don't know if he's going to be with Augusta or, or some other guy. But he's trying to check on his children. Amen. No matter how far we are. We want to check on our children. Good or bad, we want to check up on our children. Wayward child, misunderstanding, we want to check on our children because of the love, because of the connection, because of the birth. Uh, I was talking with some young women the other day, uh, and the baby was saying, dad, 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 dad. And the woman has carried the baby for nine months. But most children, I don't know of all, their first word is going to be dad, dad. And so these are Paul's children in the ministry. And he have given sons. He's been given sons in the ministry. And so right now what he's wanting to do is find out 
how my babies are doing. I want to find out are they fighting the good fight of faith. I want to find out. If they're doing well. I want to find out if they've been listening to me. I want to find out if they're walking with integrity and character. Job chapter 2, when the sons of God came, sons of men came before God, and they stood there, it says Satan also came. And when Satan got there, the Lord said, have you tried my servant Job? That's your baby. That's your only one. You got him protected. You got a hedge around him. Uh, if you let me touch him, I can make him cuss you to his face. Again, the Bible says, when the sons of men came before God, it says Satan was also there. And he said, have you tried? This is the Lord accident. Because you're going to be tried. If you're looking for a patty cake church, a uh, patty cake Jesus, a uh, feel good message, I'm not that doctor. I'm a doctor. And my degree is to help you to get the infection and the cancer out. My wife and I have both dealt with cancer. Before she was diagnosed, the Lord told me to buy this sword. I never took it out of the sheath until today. My grandchildren couldn't play with it. It sat up there. And I asked her who moved my sword. That sword can't be moved because the Lord told me to buy this. See, the sword that we carry in the spirit is the word of God. And it's able to penetrate, to cut through and pierce through the discerning even the intent of your thoughts. And it's so sharp that it can cut through the joint and the marrow. See, the word of God is meant to be quick, decisive, and plain. Unlike the word, I only have an edge on one side, but the word cut both ways, going and coming. Because when we bring the word, we come to decapitate. We come not to play with our enemy. We come to be destroyer. See, despite popular opinion, we want somebody to make us feel good. We want to be happy. And we're going to talk about that because our message is going to come from Philippians chapter 4. But we're going to cover it all today. Amen. And so we got to get this cancer out. And one of the cancers is our mouth. Amen. I'm going to cut your lips off. I'm cutting that bad tongue off. I'm going to give you a new tongue today. I'm going to give you a new mind, a new mouth. Well, away with that foolishness. Let me tell you what foolishness is. Amen. Let me tell you something. Uh, because God said we're supposed to be light. He says it in Matthew 5, and he says it in here. I don't want to be stupid. The word foolish means stupid, witless, brainless, senseless, unintelligent. Need I say more? I will. Ridiculous. Absorb. Nonsensical. Preposterous. Imprudent. Thoughtless. Impudious. Rash. Reckless. Foolhardy. Half-baked. What is that saying? His bread ain't done. His bread ain't done. Look at him. See, this is the way you look to God. When you're foolish, when you don't trust the word, you look like some of these people, and I ain't talking about them. I got one. I call him over. I say, pick up this. I give him this. I let him work for me. I ain't going to call his name. But uh, one of them, he'll come work for me sometime. But Thoughtless, mindless, witless. Uh, listen, it's something else here. Uh, half bake, I want to say again. And we also say your elevator don't go all the way to the top. Incautious. Amen. 
Uh, I want to look that up. I remember what it was one time. Uh, headless of potential problems. Amen. You won't take caution. And so Paul is talking to his children. See, we've seen that son, he's a good, good father. And a good, good father, I'm going to try to head you off before you get in the danger zone. I'm trying to head you off before you get yourself in something that daddy can't get you out of. Amen. I'm trying to head you off before you ruin your lie. Before you say what he said in Proverbs, there's a scripture in Proverbs that says, Oh, if I'll only listen to the words of my mother and the words of my father, I should have let her word been an ornament about my neck and a piercing in my ear. Oh, if I'd only listen, but now I'm in a bad place. My mind is bad. I'm distorted. I want to quit. I want to give up. I want to throw in the towel. I want to commit suicide. People right today, last night, commit suicide because they gave up. But all you have to do is listen. So the prophet, Julian Porter, told us, shut your mouth. Said the Lord said, shut your mouth. And those of you that know everything, I'm going to tell you what he says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Be not rash with thy mouth. Mm. For thou is upon earth. I'm in heaven. I'm daddy. I'm big daddy. I'm in heaven. Hey Amen. That my nephew there. His, his kids would say, uh, what big dad? That's what they used to call him. What big dad? Amen. What big dad? Big dad is in heaven. He says, I'm in heaven. Speak, but let your words be few. Yeah. Least you say something I didn't say. You ever heard them folks to go and tell something, construe what you said? intentionally lie what you said so I had to learn to be quiet in the church well you know sister uh huh you know brother so so uh huh cause the bible says only talk to trustworthy men you can't talk to everybody and you can't keep running your mouth off to everybody especially to those that are not yoked up with you the bible said be not yoked up with unbelievers why is that marriage why we have more uh, divorce in the church than the world cause we yoked up with the wrong people. We talking too much. We doing too much. But today we are gonna be healed of our mouth and our minds. Why and how do I know that? I know because the word tells us today that we are gonna rejoice in the Lord. Amen. We gonna rejoice because our father is gonna teach us and tell us how to bring this body and this mind and this flesh under control. Amen. Nobody wants to be controlled anymore. Nobody wants to be disciplined. And that ignorance spirit has filtrated into the church. Ignorance, stupid, mindless, thoughtless, half-witted, half-baked, elevator not going to the top has crept in the church, but it was by way of the leaders. It was by way of the false prophets. Jesus said, he that is a hireling cares not for the sheep. Amen. When he see the wolf come, he's going to run. In other words, when he been found out that he been shaking and baking, no effect, no power in the church. That's a lie. We supposed to be healed. My wife being healed, the Bible said healing. I'm healed is the children's bread. That's the children's bread. Healing, I should be walking in all the time. Amen. That's what the words Jesus said. Healing is the children's bread. Amen. I need Aunt Rosa to stand before we take off because I'm ready to go now. Ain't Rosa the marriage class know about you well? I told them you will be teaching the class. Lights on, please, so they can see my Aunt Rosa that I talk about. Turn around. Some of my married folks up there ain't Rosa. That's your Aunt Rosa. 
the matriarch. Amen. Okay, we ready to go now. Let's go. Let's do it. The subject is just do it. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. Oh, we got to do some things. I've been a doer all my life. All I know is to do. All I know is to work, serve the Lord, and fish. That's what I do. When my wife used to talk noise, you know where I'm at. I'm either at the creek, I'm at the church, or I'm at work. Just do it. Therefore, my beloved, and long for a brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I implore you to you and sent you to be of the same mind in the Lord. Hold on. And I urge you also, true companion, listen. When you have a problem in the church, this is the father. Look at me as your daddy. I have many sons and daughters everywhere. Look at me and listen to the word of God as your daddy talking to you. Whatever the problem between diamond and topaz, they need to fix it before I fix it. That's the way I was taught to old folks. In our family, we don't have that issue where it's six years since you talked to your sister, 10 years since you talked to, because we're going to come together collectively. Either y'all going to work it out or all of us together will kick your butt in lame and dumb and turn, and you're going to get it resolved. We don't walk around with the grudges. Why is it that all of a sudden in the church, you think it's cool for Joyce and Cecilia to keep hell in them, which void the spirit of God to come in. Your tithes and offering is not going nowhere. It can't work for you until you get it right. Jesus says, leave your gift at the altar. You go and get it right with your brother and your sister. Since we know so much and since we talk so much, go get it right with your brother and sister. Amen. The Lord is good. And the Lord is greatly to be praised. Amen. And I urge you, help these women who label with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. See, you got a right to know that you are saved. You got a right to know that you're in hell. Paul said you're in the book of life. When the children of Israel kept messing up the Lord, Moses said, Lord, take my name out the book. Just forget. He said, no, I'm not taking your name out the book. No. Your name. When you're walking with God and you're talking with God and you're loving like God has told you to, your name is in the book of life. All you got to do is be like that marathon runner. I got a big hill. I got my pace. The daggone, we always look forward because we know most of the times though Ethiopians going to win. They condition, they, they run in a pace. They're not trying to compete with nobody else. Run your race. That's what we're going to find out today. Run your race. Stay in your lane. Because a lot of times in ancient Greek, when they ran a race around the track, they used to put smut on the wall. And your garment had to stay white. If your garment was defiled, you were disqualified. Well, speed it up to today. When you run your race, if you get out of your lane... You are disqualified. You are called to walk in joy. You are called to walk in love. You are called to walk in peace. You are not called to be and to have a nervous breakdown. I break that spirit today. You are not going to have a nervous breakdown. You are not going to kill yourself. I want y'all to say that everybody in here. I'm not. I can't hear y'all. I'm not. Going to kill myself. Heaven or hell. High water. I don't care what's going on. I'm not killing myself. I'm not going to fight this devil and then kill myself and go to hell. Quit listening to them lying preachers. Quit listening to the lying prophets. Amen to tell you. That's a shortcut. That's saying that God can't deliver you. And my Bible said he, he's a deliverer. 
He can deliver you in a time of trouble. He's a very... He's a very present help in the day of trouble. See, I got a God that will defend me. I'm just being tested. Look at the life of the Hebrew boys. They said, King, I'm going to stay in character. You are my master. I appreciate you bringing me from Jerusalem. You took me from my home. You took me from my mama. You took me from my brothers and sisters. You took me from my temple. You took me from the place that my Lord provided for me. But be it known today, if I die, it's not at your hand. Because my God, in whom I serve, he's able. And if he don't deliver me, so what? I'm not going to bow. You got to stop bound to alcohol. Stop bound to drugs. Stop bound to lying spirits. Stop lying to yourself. Stop being weak. Stop being sad. Quit listening to this mess. I knew what was going to happen when I heard the song. I kissed the girl last night and I like it. What we got? A bunch of girls with girls and men with men. Huh? Our minds have become distorted. And then you got preachers marrying folks like that. Huh? I love everybody. Amen. But that ain't the way my Bible reads. Let's go to the next verse before I get too far ahead, King George. Go ahead. Go back for me. Uh, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. I'm going to be happy no matter what. I have a right to be happy. Listen to what Jesus says. Trials and tribulations ye shall have, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world already. Huh? Be of good cheer. I have overcome. I'm your daddy. All you got to do is follow the example. When my body was hurting and when my wife was driving me and my mom and my dad to Little Rock and my bones, I couldn't get comfortable and I, I couldn't sit right, you know. I was hurt. Nothing was comfortable, and, and I was hurting, but I could make it. You know why? Because one summer, my daddy had a quadruple. Bypass surgery. Then he had to have work on his colon. Then they would put his bowels in, twist it. And he said, son, I don't know what's happening, but every Tuesday, I'm throwing up because on Sunday, he was eating. And I didn't know what he was going through. I didn't know what was actually happening. And so once I learned that, it hurt me that I wasn't there for my daddy. Amen. But that gave me encouragement and insight that if my daddy can make it through it, I can make it through. Jesus is telling you, I've already paved the way. When I say all power is given into me in heaven and earth. I got all power, not some power, but, but my power is there for you. Quit living beneath the power. He said, Acts 1 and 8, after this power, deutimus, dynamite. I like to say nitroglycerin because I'm small, I'm short. I'm, I'm going to blow up. I'm like Bin Laden. I saw my cousin Fred somewhere. When we played dominoes, I said, I'm like Bin Laden. I'm blowing up things. Amen. Uh, in the spirit, I'm as crazy as Vladimir Putin and that other dude in China. That's how crazy I am. When I get up here to preach, I'm out there every devil and demon and lying spirit that is lying to you. I'm blowing up things. I'm not politically correct. I'm not going to talk correct. I come to deal with the spirit. I come to deal with that dude in South Arkansas. You are not here to kill yourself. Get an understanding that we're going to go through some things, but you can rejoice in the Lord. 
Amen. But you ain't going to get that being hard-headed. One thing we know about children, I remember my mother-in-law. Where she at? Raise your hand. She told me, son, when your kids are five and six years old, see, y'all think it's just me. This is a tradition. Whether it's in-law or by-law. She says, when they get up to 12 and 13, this is what you're going to have to do. Now they get up to 6 and 17, and they get up and try to do this. I remember she told me about her son one time. He was going to back talk. She threw that ball. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Mama, what you do? Hey, because we're going to get to the, oh, we right there. Philippians 2.14. When dad is talking, this is the rule. I don't need you talking back. I don't care if you, if I'm 40, they 20. If I'm 80 and they 40, I'm done my kids and then I got a new one now. You know, that's the rule. Listen to what he says. Philippians 2.14, do all things without murmuring and complaining. But as I studied this, it wasn't just what I thought it was. Listen to what it is in Greek. It's like muttering or grumbling in a low tone under your voice. It is an, an emotional rejection of God's providence, will, and circumstances of your life. Moses. What's wrong with the people? What are they grumbling about? What are they mumbling about? What are they complaining about? Have I not been good to them? I brought them out with a strong hand. The Bible said, with his right hand. I brought them out, they ate quail. I gave them water from a rock. I healed them of everything. Have I not been good? What are they murmuring and complaining about? Sometimes we're with the wrong folks. When you look at the book of Jude, which most people don't, Jude is before Revelations. It says that Jambres and them kept up confusion. There are people designed to infect your church, but we got to be of those that of wisdom and knowledge that I can begin to study. Yeah, that sister, I got my eyes on. I'm going to tell you so and so, let's pray about it. One day somebody come up in here and I uh, told a couple of people, I said, we need to pray. I said, that, that chick ain't no good. I'm watching her. Every time I look around, she's trying to say something and I ain't going to say who the man was. I said, but I'm watching her and I got them sisters. But I learned that because uh, my Aunt Diane, who is not here, she told us about a lady that came to their church and was seeking to wreak havoc, but the women of the church started praying. What am I saying to you? Stop talking and start praying. When you see something that ain't right, heck, I don't know everything. I don't know who after me. I don't know who after Pastor Cricket, but they said, the Bible said that they're after the anointing. Yeah. Amen. I don't know who it is, but you didn't know you need to get there. Hey, we need to pray. I'm seeing something. I don't get in there talking. Joyce Myers said when she started a prayer meeting, when you come there, leave all your mess out there. We coming in here to pray. Women, I don't know what you do here, but don't talk about nothing else. I'm your daddy today. Pastor Cricket left me in charge. Come here to pray. This is what we're going to target. This is what we're going to destroy. And we ain't taking no from else. Everybody got a problem. My foot hurt, my back hurt, my toe, my head, my eye. We know all that. We, we come in for 30 minutes to raise hell and to destroy the devil. Amen. The violence take it by force. Amen. Listen, it says... The word disputed here means questioning or criticizing directed towards God. A lot of times, children or workers or whoever, some people just learn to ask, and listen, ain't got time to ask on that. If I give you an instruction and direction, I expect they carry it out. Well, we were just thinking, I didn't ask no we. What did I say? Uh, the centurion recognized who Jesus was. My daughter need a healing. And Jesus said, I'll come. You ain't got to come there, Jesus. I recognize that you have authority over my life. You have authority over spirits, and you have authority over sickness. All you have to do is say, speak a word. 
Yolanda Adams used to sing that song, Speak a Word. The church used to always say, speak a word. But right now, we got two points for this, two seconds for that. And if Jesus ain't came in the midst so well, we don't have time to wait on the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen, in the Old Testament, when they found the word and how they actually supposed to have been living, it said they began to weep and cry. And they called a fast. Mama didn't eat. Daddy didn't eat. The sheep didn't eat. We know we're going to need some meat tomorrow. But this is serious. See what he's saying here. We no longer take the word of God seriously. We got three points for this. Three points for that. How about just reading the word? How about taking the antidote for our life? Because what the world is missing is joy. That's why all throughout this text, he talk about joy. And he said, my joy will remain in you. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, my joy I give to you, not as the world give it, but give I unto thee. Stay ye in my joy. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. He that loveth me not, keep not my commandments. This have I spoken unto you that your joy, your peace, your mind that you're losing will remain. Because what's happening, we're getting off the foundation. We've left the foundation. And when you lose the foundation, you're walking on quicksand. Nothing else will stand. You're on seeking sand. Amen. The first science project I did with my son. We created a solid foundation. We created one on sand. We created one out of concrete. You know, only what you do for Christ will last. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what they say. Don't worry about being popular. You're not in school. Amen. The school of the Lord means I may be lied on. I might be mistreated. I might be talked about. I might be spit on. My beard might be yanked out. That's the school of the Lord. Amen. But because you're in Christ, you got joy. You got peace. Because what has happened, we don't understand that when we suffer with Christ, we're going to reign. We got a cross over there and a cross over there. Listen to what Jesus said. If any man is to be my disciple, mine. This means you belong to me. This is personal. We got a relationship. I'm in love with you. You're in love with me. I'm going to take care of you. But you got to do, you got to carry your own cross. If any man is to be my disciple, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. You can't get the glory and God get the glory. You, you got to empty self. In Philippians chapter 2, it said, Jesus thought it not to be robbery or to be equal with God, but he robed himself in the flesh and he humbled himself in humility that he may not get the glory. He said, if I glorify myself, I'm not able to glorify the one that sent me. Say, amen. God has sent us into this world to be a light. Amen. Listen. Let's move on. Amen. I'm not running just for my health, but we're running for a victory in Christ Jesus. For there is a reward both now and then. Amen. There's a reward. When we keep running for Christ, we run from not just salvation, but we're running from corruption. Amen. We're defeating corruption. Amen. Listen. Because the Bible talks about a wreath a lot, but we call it a trophy today. Amen. We have victory over our feelings. Amen. Because our feelings is what's getting us in trouble. I feel like I'm in love. I teach my marriage class. Don't do nothing. Don't do nothing. We need to practice abstinence. Don't do nothing. Because when you start doing something, your mind is cloudy. Because we're talking about the mind. Yeah. It's a terrible thing to weigh. You don't know if you're in love or not. You're just caught up in emotion. Yeah. Yeah. The Christian, Paul, is teaching us, we can't get caught up in emotions. We can't get caught up in our feelings. We can't get up 
caught up in all of this worldliness. This is a trick of the enemy. And when you start practicing things, your mind become cloudy. The doctor called and says, you need to go get some vitamin D. And he sent a strong, my wife said, you've been taking a vitamin D test. I said, he said, this is what I need. Come to find out, I was starting to talk to myself. I said, dang, I buying that devil. I ain't losing my mind. I can't remember nothing. I can't remember this. I can't. And so I read up on it. When you get a deficiency in vitamin D, remember earlier I was talking about my bones were hurting, yeah, yeah. but also your mind become cloudy. We got a deficiency of the word, a deficiency of what God said, what God expect, how God said be circumspectly, what God calls joy. What God calls peace. See, when you got a deficiency of the word, a deficiency of the Bible, a deficiency of what he says, then your mind, Pastor, I think it ought to go this way. Pastor Cricket called me and battled me. I said, put him out. I agree with you. It don't bother me, Pastor, because he's trying to take over. When you got a brain deficiency, you, wanna, you can't take over my house. If you bind the strong man, the devil is alive. My uncle's son, A. Rose's oldest brother, I was about 24, we had a house in Camden. He smoked a lot, like some of us, amen. And he said, boy, where's the ashtray? There's no smoking in my house, uncle's son. Boy, where's the ashtray? There's no smoking in my house. That's the way I've been all my life. Hey, son, you're going to have to get me a can. Uncle son, there is no smoking in my house. At your house, Sister Vashti house, you might can do it. Not my house. There has got to be some spirit. It's time for us to get hinds feet. The Bible says you're supposed to have hinds feet. That means right here. Have you ever watched them goats? I'm amazed at the way them goats run up and down the mountains. I'm just amazed when it's first born, it has the ability to run and to stand. You're going to have to get you some hind feet and some stick to itness. You're going to have to declare and make a stand. You're going to change. You're going to change. You have to change. You can't keep running like this. You will die and go to hell. Hell is not the end. Amen. And I'm not going to go there today because we're going to be joyful in the Lord. But I must tell you that that is the end result of not listening. It can cost you your very life. You spend a lot of years giving your strength to women, men, drugs, and alcohol. That your joy, your peace that wasn't meant to be displayed like that. You suppose God got some good looking men. Ain't Rosie right there? I just told him, Ain't Rosie. I told him what I used to tell you that when God write another Bible, he's gonna say, Maurice Gaskin was goodly. My brother laughing. To look upon. Oh, yeah, he said it about the Hebrew boy. Hey, man, uh, my grandma, you said, uh, I can't say that. <laughs> You're a poor man that won't toot your own heart. <laughs> hey, man, I don't need to pass the collar. We better move on. Hey, man, <laughs> y'all trying to get me in trouble. Hey, man. Paul is rejoicing because Aphrodite didn't die. And that's what he's telling us in chapter 2. He, he has a love and a gratitude. What a help our mind is start like Sister Becky does a lot for the work. Stand up, Sister Becky. She does a lot for people. She'll go and pick up. She'll do whatever. She help get food. You may sit down. She does a lot. Just showing simple courtesy. You was created. Barney didn't invent that. God did. Please say what please and thank you. They're called. The magic word. There are some things that's supposed to be magic to us. That when a problem come up, let's pray. Amen. When you're feeling sad, the joy of the Lord is our strength. When, when, when I'm broke as Joe, the, uh, let the, let the uh, poor say I'm rich. Amen. Let the poor say I'm I told you what I've done with a pick. We needed some money. I took a pick out there. I didn't know it was a son. I felt led by the Spirit, and I started beating the ground. Spring up, oh well. Spring up, oh well. Spring
praying, then the anointing of God come upon me, just like I was singing or preaching or something. Then the anointing spring up a well, and I was scared to stop because of the man in the Bible. The Lord told him, if you'd have shot this many arrows, I'd have done this. So I just beat the ground, beat the ground, beat the ground till I got tired. Amen. Because I trust him that much. I know too much about him. You can't make me doubt him. Just because it ain't working for you don't mean it ain't going to work for me because I'm going to hold on. We used to sing a song, hold on to God's unchanging hand. You got to know how to hold him. Amen. You got to keep holding no matter what it look like. Amen. Hold on. Listen. Uh, let's go on. I want to go. Let's go to, uh, I believe it. I don't want to skip something for you. It's something important. Uh, I'm going to finish reading. Uh, I got it right here. Children of God in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. We're, right now, y'all, we're caught up in a whirlwind. Whatever's happening in the natural is parallel in the spirit. All of these floods you see, it's a flood of this craziness in the church. All of this craziness and hypocrisy is in the church. And he wants us to be lights. Every one of you, young and old and in between, you're called to be a light. Amen. And he wants us to be a destroyer. Amen. Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Yes, and if I'm being poured out, as a drink offering on the sacrifice and services of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I may be encouraged when I know your state. So what he's saying, y'all, I know that y'all are doing the right thing. Now, a lot of y'all ain't playing hooky. You could have stayed home fishing, baking a cake, just sleeping. Because Pastor Craig, oh, I've been a part of that. Oh, he preaching, I ain't coming. Oh, she's singing, I'm not even coming. Oh, they, that's going to be the praise team this Sunday? I'm not coming. You know, oh, yeah, because we get in the flesh. You need deliverance. Amen. So he's in carry, you know. Jesus talk about it all. Do I need to give you a scripture? Jesus says, what's going to happen when the master come and find the servants not doing what they supposed to do. I'm going to give you another thing to think on. Uh, if the righteous scarcely make it in. Now he asked the question. Where will he leave the sinner and ungodly? Well, I'm glad you asked. Amen. I'm going to show you and then we're going to go on. Because you asked the question. I'm going to give you the revelation. Uh, let's see. Revelation 22 and 12. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his works. Everybody's going to get paid. This is one of the few times, whether you show up or not, you're getting paid. 40 hours, 10 hours, a million hours, you're getting paid. That's what Jesus told a man when he says, You're going to go to work at 5 in the morning. Yes, sir, I work all day for a penny. Man come at 2.10, hired another one at 4.35 o'clock, he got two cents. And the dude with one cent got mad. He said, what you mad about? What you disgruntled about? He got paid, but you agreed to the penny. Hey, the last going to be first and the first shall be last. The Bible is already written quick. Get the rocks out your jaw. Be happy. I want to just be in the house. I don't care what, when, where, and what else. I want to get, but listen. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. I'm the first and the last. Blessed are those who are uh, his commandments that they may have the right. See, you got a right to be happy. You got a right to the tree of life. You got a right to be joy. Get out of this mess. If you need to, throw your shoes off when you get home. You got to start doing some acting. You act when you got your boyfriend. You act when you got your wife. That's why we got divorces. Because what I thought I was getting, I didn't get. 
She was full of hell. He was full of hell. She was lying. He didn't have nothing. That was his daddy car. That was his mama's money. And mama didn't cut him off. Now, you, you've acted before. But now I can teach you some things. In the kingdom, you got to start calling those things that are as though it were. See, it works the opposite. The Lord spoke in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was void and without form. And the Lord says, let the uh, ferments separate themselves. And he said, that's good. That's very good. And then he says, let the seeds begin to yield after they can. That's good. And that's very good. Amen. But then God thought so much of us, he bent down and formed man with his hand. And he breathed into him the bread of life. He bred life into you. And the devil, see, all year long, the Lord has been telling me, that the dragon is after the seed of the woman. You have to go to Revelation and Isaiah to get that. The dragon is after the seed of the woman. Amen. Uh, he wants our babies. He wants the young children. He wants them confused. He wants the babies in the womb. He wants the baby outside the womb. He wants everything. He wants you. Amen. But he, he can't have us. So you need to go home and start getting, if you're feeling down and out, find you some happy music and play it. I don't care what it is. If you have to play the song, be happy. I don't know it. I can't remember. So, hey, just be happy. Juanita Baker said, you bring me joy. You know, your husband might be getting on your nerve now, but put the song in, you bring me joy when I'm down. You know, uh, you, can, you got the idea. Let's go. <laughs> Amen. Let's go. But listen, okay. I want you to see something. We ain't finished. Uh, but outside are dogs, sorcerers, sexually immoral, mur murderers, idolaters, whoever loves and practice a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify these things to the church. Amen. But listen, in the midst of everything that's going on, and I want to give you some good advice before we get to pressing towards your mark. If your Facebook is bothering you, turn it off. You don't have to sleep. I sleep with my phone because I let the Bible play all night till my wife tell me to turn it off. If I can remember to put my earphones on, I put them on. I, let, I sleep with my Bible running. Before they invented that, I slept with it on my chest. Amen. I've had different demons to come visit me, but that was my protection in Dallas. Succubus come and looked at me in Dallas. But I had my Bible and fear tried to come up on me. And I said to fear is sin. So I began to pray. Succubus is a female demon. She's off the chain. Amen. She ain't right. I ain't right either. So I got some. Amen. But I want to tell you, let me give you some good advice as a father. That's my job today is talk to you like a father. Turn the phones off if it's bothering you. Don't put your business, your mama business, your church. Do you hear me? I'm your daddy today. Do not put your business your mama business, your daddy business. I don't look at Facebook, but if I get win about my name on there from one of them, oh yeah, pray. I'm for real. I'm for real. That's sickening. Oh, we finna go out of town today, everything. Somebody can rob your house. You only need selective folks to know where you are. When I leave my jobs, I might tell one or two men where I'm going. Everybody don't need to know where I'm at. Everybody don't need to know what's going on in your house. Turn that phone off. Daddy took your computer because you were looking at the wrong stuff. He took your computer because you, you're not doing your homework. 
Everybody in here that got the phone on, they ain't paying attention to the pastor. They're not looking at the Bible. I'm not that dumb man. I'm daddy. You may be playing dominoes, Miss Pac-Man, whatever. Turn the phone off. If it's causing you restlessness, if it's robbing you of your peace, if it's robbing you of your joy, amen. I remember I was meditating, and the scripture keep coming to mind, and I don't know if I shared it with you. Uh, oh, magnify the Lord with me, and bless his holy name. All week long, every time I thought about it, I began to weep. Oh, bless the Lord. You know, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mind. No matter what's going on, I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to give him the glory. That's what Paul is telling. I have decided that the world don't have nothing to offer me. I've decided that the world has hurt me long enough. I have decided that I'm going to do what the psalmist said. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. See, you can't make me die them. I know too much about it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Mm. And thank him for all of his wonderful works towards men. He kept me from danger seen and unseen. He kept me from myself when I made stupid decisions. He protected me when I could have been ran over. He protected me a few months ago when the guy pulled out in front of us. He protected me with my wheels trying to come off my truck. That's why I got rid of it. Amen. He protected us coming from Georgia when my wheel, uh, truck went from one side of the road, come up, and my mama just kept on that day. I didn't know why she was doing it. I called her, I said, why did you do that? She never done it, never done it, never done it. Just kept putting crosses all on my truck that day, all on that truck. So I called her after that happened. I said, I'll tell you why you did it. My truck went from one side of the road to the other six lane. We lacked at five feet, and you know it's going to be a mess, don't you? You know how it is in Georgia and in Houston. It's going to be a mess. But God, but God. He's going to protect me. He is my Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. He is my Jehovah Shalom. He is my peace. Amen. But really, I don't have to name none of them names because it's in this chapter. I don't have to call all them Jehovah names because it said, at the name of Jesus, everything in earth is going to bow. Everything under the earth is going to bow. Everything above the earth is going to bow. Amen. And every knee and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. You ain't got to like me. You ain't got to walk with me. But there is a day of reckoning coming. There is a day that you cannot escape. Amen. And I thought about my grandmother this week when the Lord told me you'll be able to take it out to sheep. You know, the great samurais, when stuff don't go their way, they getting defeated. You know, you've seen all the movies. They take this out, they kill themselves, and they bow. But this is what the Lord told me. Amen. I made up my mind. I don't care what the Baptist doing, Presbyterian, Church of Christ, Church of God in Christ, any other Christ, the Catholic, the Methodist, the Presbyterian, we all on the same battlefield. They got some things distorted. But if he want to know truth, he going to make it. Whoever wants to know truth, it's going to be revealed to him. Whoever loves God. So my grandmother used to say when she prayed, when, my, when I can't pray and my feet studying on my war, war no more, I lay my hand in the sand. You give me a place in your kingdom. I ain't got time to fight nobody no more. I ain't got time to fight you. Whatever you want to do, it's okay with me. But you're going to wish you could listen. It's okay because I know what joy is. I know what peace is. I know what love is. And your dilemma, watch Jesus, your dilemma don't affect me. There was many people hurt. There was many people broke. 
There were many people needed to be healed. This one particular place, Jesus pulled up. He got out the boat. Let's go, Peter. <laughs> What's what wrong, Lord? These people need help. You see all of them? They ain't got no belief. They don't have no faith. They want my hand, but they don't want me. You got to have the maker. See, the maker knows all about you. He knows all about your situation. You, he is the potter. You are the clay. Amen. He knows what temperature. And so when I was studying this, it said people that try to get by back in the day, they would melt candle wax in the potter. And so if you was a good person, an advanced person that bought pottery, you would hold it up to the sun. And when you held it up to the sun, it would show the cracks in the pottery, which would let you know this is cheap, you know. It's cheap. People that buy good clothing, all they do is walk up. My auntie, she dealt with material a long time. She, she know if this is silk or rayon or polyon or whatever that stuff be. <laughs> Polyester, you know. Hey, hey, you wear this, you might burn up this summer. You might need to get a little linen. And so what am I saying? You got to go through the fire. And so what he's telling them, hang on in there. Because what you're going through is only temporary. Amen. Y'all, let's move to chapter 4. Amen. Oh, it says chapter 3. Hold on. Let me give you this word. Oh, we got to go. Amen. Verse 12. Not that I have already attained or am ready perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold on me. Brethren, I do not count myself to apprehend it. But one thing I do, listen, young people, if you don't hear nothing else, amen, if you don't hear nothing else, you got to do this. You don't have to remember every scripture. That's my gift. But listen, you can do this, amen. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. You too young to let your world be shaped about some boy that Susie took. You're a good looking girl. You're a handsome young man. God has somebody for you. Some people are meant to be temporary in your life. Amen. Quit trying to hold on, but keep on moving on. Amen. Listen, I'm reaching forward to those things which are ahead, and I press. I didn't say your heart wasn't, wasn't broken. I didn't say it didn't hurt. I didn't say you wasn't disappointed. I didn't say that, but I'm going to press. It's hurt me, but I'm going to press. I'm going forward. I'm going forward. I'm not going to call him. I'm not going to text him. And when he decides to text me, I'm more than just a side piece. I'm, I'm more than that. So you got to see yourself. I'm more than that. I'm value. I have value. Remember the pottery, the, the, the cheap pottery? You ain't no cheap stuff. Jesus purchased you with his own blood, with his own hand. Amen. I'm going to tell it on my son. Several years ago, I bought him a phone. It's all I could buy. We was in Hot Spring, $60, I think, and we was fishing. I said, son, don't drop it in the wild, Dad. I'm going to get me an iPhone. I can't. But that was my $60. That was the best Daddy could do. I worked for that. It cost me something. It cost Jesus something. And you're going to sit here and think you're going any kind of way. And the Bible says this in Hebrew. You are trotting under your feet. What you're supposed to be doing to the devil, you're doing it to me. That's what makes a mother and a father angry. Uh, Susie said such and such. I'm your mama. Mama is looking out for your welfare. Mama gave you a roof over your head. I nursed you when you were sick. When you were disappointed, when the boy lied on you, when you got to prom and he had the other girl and I bought the dress. I spent the money, my hard-earned money from Walmart that it took me two months to save and borrow money from my brother to pay for the dress. 
How you think that make me feel? It don't just happen like that, people of God. Wake up. But the real joy comes when wisdom come in, when knowledge come in. Wisdom is to know. The, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And to depart from your evil ways is understanding. So what you're supposed to say is, okay, Dad, I don't see it. But I'm going to go with your word. Okay, Mama, I don't understand it. I believe he loves me. I'm going to trust you. See, our problem, we got to get to trust. We got to get to love. And we got to get to where we're at here. Amen. Give me a few minutes and I'm out of here, y'all. Uh, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ. Therefore, let as many as are mature have this mind. Let as many. In marriage class, I teach dead against. I've heard it too long in the church. Women undermining their husband. If he said they can't go, whether you like it or not, agree to it. You go in the room and talk. Amen. Y'all go back. Wait a minute. Y'all go back there and settle the disagreement. Don't do it in front of the kids. When you do it in front of the kids, say amen. Oh, I can play this. I can do it. No. So, and I have, what did your mama say? What did your daddy say? I said, when you undermine, it causes confusion. When you undermine, it allows the evil work. Of the, the Bible said he is the great deceiver. He's not going to come in with a pitchfork. Every man can see that. But she's going to come in shaped like a figure eight, smelling like roses. The Bible said her hair going to be long, black and silky, like raven feathers. Said her front parts, because a lot of you can't handle it, stands like two snow-capped mountains. In other words, all the Song of Solomon said was this woman was fine. I could recognize that woman if it was she had a fork in her hand, you know, or you could recognize the man, but he's six foot five, you know, smelling good. I guess my wife likes short man. She do too. We short. We proud of him. Brother Jerry, he's short. Hey, we're dynamite. We're nitroglycerin. Uh, he blew my mind when he was talking about when he couldn't fight cancer. You know, I could see it. It made me weep. He said, now, I could fight somebody calling my wife. I can fight somebody talking to my wife. But I couldn't fight that. He cried. And then they prayed. She's still here. She's playing on the keyboard. Amen. Let's go on. What was I at? <laughs> Amen. Listen. Let's go. Uh, God will reveal even this to you, but we're going we're gonna to end with something here in chapter 4. Therefore, my beloved, I long to see you. I've been missing y'all. You know, we, we can't stand it when we don't see our kids. Anybody got kids? Yeah. But I'm like my old boss man, Leon, from Hamburg. If I knew grandkids was this much fun, I'd have skipped the kids and got the grandkid. But you know what I used to say? I was I could be a little smart too sometimes. I said, Master Leon, that's what I call him because I had a preacher friend, that was his favorite word. I said, Master Leon, everything is a process. You can't get the grandkids without the kids. God got it fixed that way. You can't get one because he know that we ain't got the patience that we used to have. We don't have the time that we used to have. And frankly, sometimes we want to be just left alone. When we had our own kids, we had no choice. But with the grandkids, we can keep them and we can send them back. Amen. But listen. I implore you because I heard something. I heard that Joyce and Cecilia got a problem. Whatever it is, I urged them to get it right. Amen. And he said, I labor with these other people. I'm going to skip on over. But rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. No matter what's going on, 
you're going to have to become numb to your surroundings. Like Job, though they slay me, yet will I trust in the Lord. Amen. Man born of a woman is but a few days full of trouble. Amen. My latter days shall be greater than my former days. Amen. 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 Yeah. Let's go on. Because I want to get here. I got to finish. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. He didn't say keep calling your prayer partner, having a pity party, talking about it for 10 and 20 minutes, then you pray two minutes and want to resolve. Get down on your knees and pray about it. While you're driving to work, pray about it. While you're over here, pray about it. Amen. Through prayer and supplication, let your request be known unto God. Amen. He will answer you. Listen, it says, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds, amen, through Christ Jesus. Uh, King George, do you have that scripture dealing with meditation, guarding your heart? The Bible teaches expressly that we should guard our hearts. Proverbs 4 and 23, excuse me. It said, above all things, guard your heart. For out of it flows the issue of life. Sometimes what's coming out of our mouth is actually coming out of our heart. But he's telling us, you got to get the Lord in so you can get the bitterness out. He wants you to learn how to rejoice. I am disappointed, but I'm going to be all right because the Lord is on my side. The Lord, the song they just sang, the Lord is going to fight my battle. When you allow, Moses, what do you have in your hand? We at the end of our rope. A lot of us is at the end of our rope. We have been there, or we may be. The Lord reminded me of something. I shared it before. We had a lot of kids that summer at the house. And after we had rolled pennies and uh, bought a bunch of lunch meat and we fed everybody, I waited till after everybody ate, I rushed up and I found me a piece of old dry, crusty bread. And the Lord told me, he told me, you'll never have to do that again. Amen. Some stuff you're going through is what he told them. Turn and wave. Bye-bye. A lot of stuff you're going through, you ain't going to go through it again. You don't have to go through it again because you're trusting in Lord. Amen. But listen, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, are noble, are just, things are pure, Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue and if there is any praise worthy, meditate on these things. And you'll find that all throughout the Bible, Psalms 1. Do you have that, Brother George? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the Lord of law. Do it he. I can't wait on you. I'm going through. Meditate day and night. I cut my wrist. I can't wait for you to get from Camden or Mississippi or, or Tokyo. Amen. I got to get to the emergency room now. Amen. Uh, let's go to the next one, brother. Uh, Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Be strong and of good courage. For this people you shall divide as an inheritance, the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. And do not, listen young people, quit fighting. Quit fighting. Sometimes people make it hard for you to be good to them. Because we're fighting. Just follow the instructions. While I'm right there, hold that thought. I couldn't find a toy. I couldn't buy another one. I looked in Louisiana. I looked in El Dorado. My grandson bought a toy last weekend. And this toy looked somewhat like a dinosaur. And he woke me up. Papa, I need your help. I need your help. The Lord is waking you up. There was a knife stuck in the belly. I said, oh, Lord, 
study psychology and my grandson is going psychotic. Is he going to be one of them murderers or killers? Because this is the sign. This is what the book said. This is what the book said. This is what the news said. Is, is he going to be like this? Papa, I need your help. I said, J.D., what you doing? The instruction, Papa, he brought me the box. I said, huh, okay. So I had to get my knife and I cut the belly out. We pulled the man out. And when we pulled the man out, he had slime all over him. And we had to put him back together inside the belly of that beast. Satan is a beast also. Inside that belly, the slime had covered him and he wasn't no king no more. He had been consumed. And so that said to me, that that's what the world, that's what the issues are lie. That's what drugs, alcohol, disobedience, and all of that other stuff would do to. The enemy wants to consume us till we just give up. The king couldn't do nothing without me and JD. But inside of each and every one of you, you are a king, you are a queen, because we are part of the kingdom. And when you're in the kingdom, you're either a king, a queen, a prince or an heir I don't know what the man thinking that's over here y'all know he married the woman he moved over here he left his kingdom he left his people but I can almost guarantee you I'm on the outside looking in but I'm gonna tell you what Proverbs says the only thing not drugs not alcohol not me killing nobody the only thing that can bring a man to a piece of bread is a woman. More bitter than death is a whorish woman. I, I, you can make me leave if this is my father, my king. What I like it for, for God I live and for God I die. I got to stay with my king. What crept in and made a man next in line leave, you know? What would make you leave your kingdom? What would make you forsake everything other than God? More bitter than death is a woman. The only thing that can bring a man to a piece of bread is a woman. But listen to what he's saying. Amen. Whatever things are pure, get your thinking cap on. You know, when you got to take your semester exam, you get pumped up. Oh, I got the cram, I got the cram. You ain't got the cram, miss. Get your word every day. Lord, well, what should I read today? And ask the Lord for a word, and he'll give you a word. And whatever lovely, whatever good rapport, if there's any virtue, and if there's any praise word, meditate on these things. Amen. But listen, uh, what was that scripture here, brother? I'm closing. Uh, in Joshua chapter 1. I think it's verse 7. Anyway, what he tells him is you got to meditate. He said, don't let this book of the law depart from your lips. Brothers and sisters, if I don't say nothing else to you today, I'll never see you again. Don't depart from this book or your phone or your tablet. Get you some me time with the Lord. Whatever you're going through, and, 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 and we're closing, and we're opening the altars. If anybody need to hear, prayer for joy, prayer for peace, a prayer for your mind. We have, uh, we're going to ask that our officers come up, our prayer warriors. You know, if anybody need prayer for their minds, for their heart, it might be something so grief or disappointment you know, that you need help. Whatever you need, God got it. God has an answer. And God wants you restored. He wants us to guard our mouth. Amen. Guard our minds. Amen. And learn to listen to what he said. Brother Wayne. Wayne, come on. Yeah. Amen. God loves everybody. He don't want you going home the same way. He don't want you going home with that broken heart. 
that broken spirit, feeling defeated, you know, feeling misunderstood. Amen. God loves you. Amen. thank all of you for coming today we thank you uh, for celebrating God with us today I thank God again for all of my family my immediate family my church family Pastor Quincy for coming today it blessed our heart and we just want you to continue to rejoice in the Lord rejoice in his strength knowing that only what you do for Christ will last may the peace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rests upon each and every one of you. And Lord, we just thank you. We just ask that you bless them back to their various destinations. In Jesus' name, amen.